Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Travel Without a Cause. Uh, today, we're in my hometown again in Lafayette, Louisiana. And standing behind me here is the old Holy Rosary Institute building. It's actually one of the oldest historic black Catholic high school buildings in the United States still standing today. Of course, it's abandoned. You can see behind me, it's pretty bad. But uh, we can still take a look around it. And some parts of the inside, some of the floors are all collapsed and all that, but uh, still very interesting. I've been wanting to get back here for a long time, but uh, the gates are closed sometimes, like this, this hurricane fence behind me, uh, this like perimeter fence or whatever they have uh, around the outside. But uh, it's open today, so I thought I'd kind of sneak in and take a look and tell you guys a little bit of history about it and all that. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I uh, hope you're enjoying your weekend. Look, kind of a gloomy, gloomy weather going on today, but uh, nevertheless, we're going to do it anyway. And so I uh, hope you enjoy it, and let's go and take a look. Yeah, what a perfect day to do an old, gloomy, abandoned, albeit beautiful building in its day, than this old, cloudy overcast day that we have today I kind of got I got lucky today because usually that fence that front piece of fence right there is usually closed because they've been kind of fencing it off in hopes of restoring it and all that over the past few years so got lucky today and uh, the gates open so I decided to go ahead and jump right in but uh yeah this is the uh, old Holy Rosary Institute and it dates back to 1913 it was built in that year and also founded um, by Reverend, uh, Reverend, Reverend, Reverend <laughs> Philip Keller and Sister of the Holy Family. Um, like I said, the architecture is a Greek rival architecture style building and uh, for all you architecture heads out there. And um, it remained open until 1993. And uh, you can tell it's just one of those old stately buildings that you don't see anymore especially in the education system. Very few of those remain like, you know, that look like this today. And uh, we're lucky enough to go to get inside today. I'm gonna to take a look inside. I don't know how safe it is inside there. It's obviously very dark and abandoned. So uh, I wanna be safe. I'll do what I can, but uh, let's go take a look around and um, and see what we can find and see what we can see. And right here to the right of it, which I love to read these, you know me, is the old, uh, these historic plaques here. And uh, it says, Holy Rosary Institute, 1913 to 1993. On July 9th, 1913, Father Keller purchased farmland once owned by the Sister of the King of France from Louis uh, Damaggio to establish Holy Rosary Institute in Lafayette, Louisiana. The institute opened September 1913 as an industrial school for African-American girls. The institute became co-ed in 1947. St. Catherine Drexel, who there's actually a school in the Lafayette area, named after her now, uh, supported the institution in Lafayette by providing a generous financial contribution that was assisted with construction, uh, constructing the three-story red brick building, which became the centerpiece of the campus. Throughout the history of the uh, Institute in Lafayette, Holy Rosary served as a vocational and technical school, a normal high school providing education to commuter and boarding students from all over the world. Uh, and for, for those of you who don't know, normal school, what that means is uh, it's basically a school that trains teachers for, um, it, it, it teaches teachers by educating them in the norms of pedagogy, which is basically the active, and pedagogy is known as the act of teaching is teaching teachers how to teach basically and how it relates to this school is they taught uh it was to train to train teachers excuse me for rural black schools so they're teaching them how to teach in rural black schools in this instance specifically for this school um and so uh let's see it was staffed primarily by the sisters of the holy family founded in 1842 by vulnerable mother henriette de lily or de lille de lee the priest and brothers of the divine word holy rosary institute was considered one of the best college preparatory high schools in the nation the institute was produced or has produced world-renowned scholars and high-ranking pro uh, professionals in many different fields very interesting huh i didn't know any of that last part until i just read this and sorry it's crooked here but that's how it's in the ground so uh <laughs> let's go take a look inside 
It's kind of where it sits. There's there's adjoining buildings that are part of it, like that part back. I'll see if we can get into that uh, that kind of steeple roofed building back there. That's a gymnasium. I think that's open. I think I can get in there. And these other parts that are next to it, like right there, that's those are all parts of the school added to it. You know, way after the fact, obviously. Those buildings are probably built, I'd say, in the 40s or 50s, maybe. Um, there's no documentation on that that I can find. But, um, so yeah, let's go, uh, I'll just kind of tell you guys some of the history as we walk around here. And, uh, if there's, if the lighting's too low in some of these places and it's just, you can't see anything, I'll just kind of back out and go back into the more lit up parts. Doesn't help that it's also a very overcast day, so. It's three stories. Most of the front windows are boarded up, probably for weather purposes. And that whole second floor balcony area is technically intact. But as you can see, it's uh, it's not intact by much. There's the old sign at the top there. Holy Rosary Institute. And something tells me that sign up there was very original and probably was put there with the school or when the school was built and I haven't done too many abandoned buildings uh, vlogs yet because you just never know how safe they are I was talking to some resident local kids just now and they were walking and running through it just now so they assured me <laughs> that there's you know nobody in here for the most part I'm not going to go too deep into this thing for obvious safety reasons but Unfortunately, as you can see, the condition of it now. And as soon as you walk in here, as soon as you walk through the door, you can see right through the roof. The second and third story holes go straight through to the roof up there. And uh, you can almost... If I could extend my arm out there, you could almost see into the second floor. But I'm not tall enough to really reach that yet. Sorry guys, I had to adjust my camera just now. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see here. So, I'll take a few steps in here because I know the front part's fairly safe for the most part. won't go too far in because I don't want to be too unsafe. I got to watch my step here, but I'm definitely not going to walk back there, but you can see how there's no door on that left wing there. And I'm sorry, I'm not getting too much low light, high resolution in here. So you might not be able to see a whole lot. Same thing on the right. Sorry, the low light conditions kind of make it blurry on the on the uh, camera here. So, but yeah. So, um, I'll go ahead and sp span up for you. This is looking up. I'm on the ground floor. You can look right up through there. Basically, the center entryway, and this is this wood right above me here. That's the the, the floor of the second floor. And you can see past that is the floor of the third floor. And you can see basically a door up there that used to be on the third floor. All this is basically just exposed now. You can see a better view of it here. Looking right up through the roof, looking up through three stories worth. There's a door that would have been on the second floor right there. And this is looking back from where I walked in to. That's the main door I walked into. And this is looking up to the second floor, then up to the third floor up there. And check that out. You can still see right there. If I can back up a little bit, you can see a, 
uh, railing right there. Like right pretty much dead centered. You can see that railing of, I guess, like an overlook or a overhanging area. And uh, I'm not going to spend too much more time in here. It's just another room or area. It's, it's sad to see things like in this condition, you know. This must have been a bathroom right here, I guess. Maybe some utility room or mud room or something. But, uh... Again, I'll try to pan up for you. It's wide open. It almost looks like I'm in between buildings here. Doorways, windows, and no flooring, except for the main floor. And uh, it's eerie looking, but it's still beautiful in a sense because you know what it used to be and what it served as and um, you have to respect that you know it's beautiful in that sense and I guess all of old buildings if not maintained and kept up with they're going to end up falling apart like that you know gorgeous oak tree right next to it Gigantic at that. I'm going to show you guys some more uh, views into the inside of the building. I just wanted to walk out around the side and uh, take a look at the oak tree and all that. With some local kids that uh, they saw I was doing um, what appeared to be YouTube videos, I guess, these days. When you see somebody walking around with a camera, they assume you have a YouTube channel. And they were right. But uh, super nice kids. They live around here. And I was asking them about it. And they said, yeah, they they walk through here all the time. And I said, what about the homeless? Are they, uh, you know, like any criminal activity or anything going on here? They said, no, not really. And that's good to know. But it's also sad to see the condition of the building so yeah let's go walk i'm gonna walk and show you guys uh that's basically that main entryways one of the only i mean places i can walk around inside that building i mean there's obviously no floor integrity in much of the rest of the building i'm gonna go walk up these steps over here and you can look down into a part that's very uh demolished looking the floor is just you know, it fell through, but, um, yeah, so like I said about the school, um, it was built to provide vocational and technical education for, uh, black females back when it opened. Uh, it also served as a normal school. Like I said, a, a school to teach teachers basically how to teach the act of teaching. And in this instance, it was to teach, um, black rural, rural schools. And who's locking up these steps here? And look at this. This is just sadly. There's nothing left of this. You can see right down through the second floor into the first floor. It just looks like a demolition site. Just wood and not much else. Again, I'm on the second floor now, or what used to be the second floor. And uh, so that's what the school served as, that's what it was built as. And back in 1947, so about 30 years, uh, 30 years or so after it was built, it became co-ed. And uh, 
it served as a co-ed. I like this cross in the door frame here. That's, that's pretty. And he's looking out on the property and such. And here's another building. I want to go try to look inside of that, that building right there is uh, the old gymnasium. And I couldn't get much data or uh, information on when those were added to the school. But I'm, a, I'm thinking when it was... Uh, Just looking at the architecture of those buildings and themselves, I don't think they're as old as the school itself, like dating back to 1913. I would assume those are back in the 40s or 50s, just going off of the, the design of it, you know, the way they look, the architecture style, architectural style, uh, you know. So yeah, these steps, I mean, walking up these steps, I just went up, they, they felt very sturdy. So uh, I felt safe on those. This little building here on the side was also part of the school. And again, it was a Catholic school. It was one of the, uh, like I said, it's still one of the oldest uh, black Catholic high school buildings still, you know, still standing in the United States. Again, I don't want to be too unsafe here. But all this is abandoned too. Just abandoned and falling apart, sadly. There's probably lots of uh, rats and stuff in here, so I don't want to get too deep into there. Plus the lighting is not good today. There's not much sunlight out, so. This looks like it would have been added. Kind of looks like almost like a little extra piece of um, schoolhouse or instruction of some type like that, if I would guess, going off of how schools are laid out, especially Catholic schools and Christian schools, or you know, like religion schools in general, they're kind of laid out that way, especially around here. Here's some of the side of it. We're kind of like in a courtyard area. It seems like most of these, let's see, most of these, these two or three buildings here probably all served for pretty much the same thing, the same reason, the same purpose. So I'm trying to talk and walk here and not stumble on myself. I desperately need to get a better camera that does better in low light conditions. Pretty sad to see, huh? It's a little windy today, guys. I do apologize if the wind noise is bothering you guys. So yeah, wasn't really planning on looking at these buildings really at all. Mostly I wanted to focus on the um, the original Holy Rosary building, but these were here, so went in Rome, you know. Gonna take a look when I can. So yeah, for, so from 1947 on, it was co-ed, which probably expanded the the, the um, enrollment. I'm sure, you know, it probably expanded greatly. And uh, this place has some much bigger rooms to it, but I don't, I don't know what they uh, served as, but they're uh, just as in, in just as in bad a shape as uh, the rest of them. And then around the, in the 1960s, 
And it doesn't say why, but maybe just change in times. 60s were also whenever schools started to desegregate and integrate. So, but in the 60s, um, the enrollment started to decline here. And then in 1974, uh, the boarding facilities portion of it was closed. Were closed. Um, it was like a little greenhouse right there or something. Horticulture or something like that. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. I'm gonna go look back here real quick. Um, I, my guess is that's when, I, when schools started to desegregate. Uh, and then, so the enrollment here started to decline. And then I said 1974, the boarding facilities were closed. So I guess it was, they boarded. They boarded here. And then uh, after that, I guess from 1974 on until 1993, it was just a regular or more of a straightforward school without the boarding aspect to it. My guess, my limited education on all that. But uh, so, yeah. And then in 1993, the school in general as a whole shut its doors. And there was a series of uh, plans to restore it and it kept falling through. Yeah, all this looks like it was just definitely pieces, you know, parts of the school, big classrooms and stuff like that. So all those plans, you know, there's multiple sets of plans to restore the place that kept falling through. And then um, finally, after all that, after those many attempts or multiple attempts to restore it, there was actually funding for the restoration that was uh, acquired. And then some groundbreaking began on the project in late 2020. And I can't find any current, I mean, I was about, you know, just, just over two years ago, so I can't find any documentation or information. Look at this old chalkboard, uh, green chalkboard in there. Very eerie, but beautiful at the same time. And again, like this was a school until 1993. So you're only talking 90, uh, 90, um, to 20, well, 30 years ago. I can't believe 1993 was 30 years ago, man. But anyway, so it's only been closed for 30 years, but I guess when you're not, when you have a building that's already as old as it is, as this is, and you just stop taking care of it and you don't have the funding for it anymore, it's going to be, uh, pretty bad shape pretty soon it probably won't take long to start falling apart and if it was it, you know it's, it's hard for me to here's the front side of the building we were just looking in by the way with the uh, chalkboard inside of it and all that let's see what it says on the front Assumption Hall. So yeah, this definitely a piece of the, uh, and the whole fence here fell or it was taken down. And the kids that were hanging out with me earlier, they said that that blue and white building right there was the old daycare. And they said uh, they started demolishing it, re demolishing it recently. You can see some of the toys there, sorry. The playground toys there. Again, sorry, my uh, gimbal gets jumpy sometimes, so my apologies on that. But let's go back to the gym here. The statue of Mary. Looks like there was possibly another statue on that one, but there's nothing there anymore. And it looks pretty dark in here, so I might not be able to see. much but uh 
hopefully as safe as I can and show you guys what I can. But the kids I, w I was talking to a while ago said they were just in here. So that's how I know that it's vaguely safe to be in here, at least at this time of day. And the lighting is not going to be the greatest, guys. I'm apologizing right now for that. But uh, you can see that with the best lighting I can give you guys. There's still some bleachers here. And some graffiti, which is to be expected in these situations. Lots of glass on the floor. And just a haunting vision of the past. Again, it's been at least 30 years since this was in use. And they might have used this. For other things they might have used it for other things after the fact but there's a look at the gymnasium not much to see there you can see everything in one shot so no point in walking around but that my friends is probably about it i've shown you everything another view of the school the main school from here Right here in Lafayette, Louisiana. And I've said it before on this channel, like when you know where to look, you can find these gems some places, you know. Holy Rosary Institute, built 1913, closed in 1993. Sad to see it. Still beautiful though in my eyes. You can imagine what it looked like in its in its heyday, you know. Well, guys, that does it for this vlog, and uh, thanks for stopping by and, and and taking this stroll with me through this property here. Um, I thought it was just beautiful seeing old places like this and, and and knowing what they used to be, and wondering what it was like back then when it was a hustling, bustling place of education and and uh, and worship, basically, since it was a Catholic school, you know, and. Um, and just wondering as you walk through the halls of this place as limited as we were just wondering what it used to be that's the stuff that kind of you know really grabs me and makes me appreciate what it is even though it's still standing today it's still barely standing standing today but still serves serves as a place of um you know historic significance especially here in the south um and uh yeah so i know if you have, if you guys know any other places like this that you'd like me to go explore and highlight and and uh celebrate the history of let me know and uh with that i'll go ahead and sign off here have a great weekend thanks for stopping by like i said um feel free to like subscribe to the channel uh, hit the notification bell so you know when more videos like this are both like these are posted uh also if you found any value in this video or value in any of my videos feel free to go to my newly uh created uh patreon page patreon.com slash travel without a cause and uh I'll go ahead and say thank you ahead of time for any and all who donate um, to the channel, to the to the page, and help this thing grow and grow and grow. Uh, I'm like at eight. I'm almost I think 860 something subs subscribers now. I got like a whole bunch all of a sudden, like 700 subscribers all in in the last like three weeks, which is unbelievable. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just going with the wave here, but it's amazing, and the channel's growing. It's just growing, growing, growing. I'm getting all these views and, and people are commenting and it's just, it's a beautiful thing. I, if, I, if you would have asked me back in August, like if I thought I'd be at this point four and a half months later, I'd say, no, no way. I would have thought it would have taken a year, year and a half for this, but uh, it's unbelievable. And thank you guys so much for every single subscription, every single view, every single minute that you guys give to this channel, watching the videos that I make and all the nice comments you guys are making and all the thanks I'm getting for making the videos and the quality that you guys are enjoying. I really truly can't say enough how much I appreciate that and what that means to me. And uh, so yeah, I will keep bringing them if you guys keep on watching them. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, what a ride, right? Uh, let's, keep it, let's keep it going. But um, anyway, 
I'll go ahead and say goodbye here and have a great night. It's getting dark here, but luckily I'm under this street light here that's giving me good lighting. So uh, <laughs> can't complain about that. Free lighting, right? Uh, so you guys have a wonderful week and stay tuned for the next one. And uh, go ahead and say goodnight. Bye, folks.